How's it going everyone? Dread here, so end of year. Uh, I'm doing a little drive at the moment, so I thought I'd just, uh, you know, have a little chat. Uh, seeing as the year's come to an end, we've got a new one approaching. Um, could be a big one, could be a big one next year. Um, I guess it goes one of two ways, right? I hope everyone's had a good year, by the way. I hope everyone's uh, made the most of it. Obviously, we've had some pretty bullish a pretty bullish market this year and, and uh, the gains have been a plenty so hopefully people have acted on that and done well um, personally it's been a, it's been a pretty good year for me um, I've had some I'd, I'd actually say it's probably been my most successful year in investing trading um, when I look at how well I've done with certain things um, yeah I think I think on a whole the project that I've, the projects that I've picked, uh, I've done I've done incredibly well. Uh, if I if I don't say so myself, but I, no, I do I do think it's been it's been a really good year for me, and I hope it has for you guys as well. Um, and next year could be a good one too. Um, I guess it depends on how you perceive things going. You know, uh, on one side of the fence, macro stuff looks bad. Um, and the recession calls that many called for this year, including me, um, that didn't play out. Um, maybe they, that, that comes home to roost next year. Um, but then again, these things take a long time to play out and the data, the data gets worse, but it can stay bad for a long time. And you know, the, the governments like to kick the cans down the road. So, um, <clears throat> you know, Maybe that recession doesn't even really play out next year. It goes into 2025. Um, maybe we don't get a recession at all. You know, I'll be very surprised, but maybe we don't. Who the fuck knows? You know, the way the governments operate these days. Um, and then on the other side of it, you've got, which would obviously be bad for asset prices if we have the recession, right? Obviously. Um, then again, on the other side of the coin, we have, uh, it looks like we have uh, ETF approvals, which uh, it looks like, I think it's like the 8th or 9th, maybe the 10th of January, looks like that might get approved. So we might get a bunch of ETF approvals, which will see a bunch of institutions making it very easy for people to buy Bitcoin, um, which would be a huge demand shock. Uh, we would see demand on Bitcoin uh, like we've never really seen before. Um, and the gates will, will truly be open there. So we'll see a pretty big demand shock and you would expect demand to be maybe doubled at, at the very least in, in that scenario. And we look like that's, that's gonna be happening. It looks like the SEC is working with a lot of these institutions now and putting the final touches on what their expectations are of these guys to get this push through. Um, and then not long after that, you know, around April time, we have the halvening. So, we're going to see a supply shock and, and the value of, of Bitcoin should reflect that. So it's a pretty interesting first uh, part of the year, really. So if we don't get a recession, then you would expect Bitcoin and crypto to perform very well in that environment. So Bitcoin, I, I'm leaning more towards a bullish year, um, but I'm not ruling out a bearish year. Uh, obviously, the halving in whether you, how much stock you put into that being a, a large effect on Bitcoin's price uh, or more of a meme, um, you know that's that's your opinion. But the ETF approval, whether that's a sell the news event or whether it ha does have a material impact on Bitcoin, uh, again that remains to be seen as well. So I would expect it to be a positive impact both of those both of those things. But um, who the fuck knows, man? Who the fuck knows? Um, someone just tried to cut me off motherfucker um so <clears throat> yeah hopefully hopefully we get a bullish year and I, and I would expect a lot of the other crypto assets to do very well in that scenario as well so it, it's going to be um an interesting 2024 i think for many people um right i just need to go grab something and then i'm going to come right back and then we'll we'll carry this on so give me one two seconds to you it will feel like nothing okay I'm back so so yeah if we was to get that 
positive price action based on the catalysts that are on the horizon then you would expect um, the rest of crypto to do well alongside it and I guess at that point it's just a matter of picking assets that you think are going to outperform others right and that have good narrative fundamentals all of that stuff and sometimes not even fundamentals you, you might just pick a a meme coin like Shiba and it goes and outperforms everything regardless so <clears throat> Sorry if you can hear a bunch of noise like my coat and all that. I, I, this was very last minute. I just thought, fuck it. Uh, uh, I'm driving, so fuck it. So, in my in my point of view, uh, if we do get that bullish price action, then I've said before, I have a bunch of assets in my portfolio, all locked and ready to go, that I've built up through the bear market, and uh, which has been the reason why I've done so well this year. Um, because I do believe that most of the work has to be done in the bear market. Um, but I also have a lot of cash on hand in case we, we get the scenario of recession and we don't get that bullish price action. So I think um, for me personally, uh, you know, my, the, the assets that I think are gonna do well, obviously the ones that I've been talking about recently, um, I, I think BitTensor does very well in that environment. Uh, I think I still think BitTensor is incredibly undervalued uh, when you look at what they have to offer in regards of subnets and I know we had the recent update and it's still um, it sounds like a very bullish update for the ecosystem and a further step towards decentralization but um, with Const doing the presentation on the 9th of January um, I'm very interested to see how that plays out uh, and, and to, to dig into the details. Um, so I think BitTensor has every um, everything in its favor to do incredibly well in that scenario. And I would not be surprised if by the end of that cycle, let's, let's we're talking in regards of a bull cycle here. Let's say the scenario is the bull cycle actually plays out in 2024. Um, that, 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 that's the, the field we're playing on right now, okay? I think if that was the case, I, I would expect BitTensor to, to smash into the top 10, personally. Um, and I think, you know, if you look at the valuations of the top 10 right now, if the bull market was to happen, those valuations climb quite a lot. And I think BitTensor matches those valuations. So I, I also think Casper does the same thing. I, I, I My personal expectation is that I, I would have two projects, two of my projects, smash into the top 10 um, by the end of this bull cycle. Now I know everybody expects that, everybody thinks their project's gonna go top 10, but that's just my expectation. I, I believe that Casper and BitTensor are, are the two projects that are gonna smash into that top 10 and occupy two of those spaces. So <clears throat> that's, that's there. Um, I think a project that I built quite a large position into um, and, and I expect to do very well with Rowan Energy, uh, tickers RWN. I, I do think that they have a pretty massive 2024 um, ahead of them. I think when you, when you look at the fact that they're one of the few projects that are gonna be actually capable of harnessing real world adoption from people who have no concept or clue about crypto and they don't need to know. Um, when you're talking about uh, installing these smart miners into people's homes through their solar panels um, and then being part of the network without even really knowing or needing to know uh, but these products save them a hell of a lot of money on their energy bills uh, I think that's a huge um, plus for most people uh, to be able to look at their energy bills and say okay if I go with these guys I'm gonna get 20% cheaper um, I can't think of one person that I know who wouldn't want to do that um, and the demand is there. The, clearly, the demand is there. They're already partnered with one of the with the largest uh, solar suppliers in the UK, uh, ESE. So, I, I I would expect you know with these guys distributing uh, these smart miners and installing them in people's homes, um, they're, they're, the re revenue that Rowan are going to generate in 2024 um, and beyond, but especially 2024 is going to um, make them one of the top gen crypto 
revenue generating projects um, in 2024. So that's exciting. And when you're looking at a project that's currently around 30 million market cap, and I know it's run a lot recently, but when you look at a project that's 30 million market cap, I think this has the potential to go into the billions. So that's just my personal expectation and that's why I've positioned so. Um, and then you got you have ones, I think Aleph continues to do well. I think, you know, they, they build, they, they just fucking build. And that's what you want from a project like Aleph. And I know that there's, you know, we had the T-Mobile news um, uh, of their connections with Aleph. And I know there's other large institutions and telecoms that are um, working alongside them. Uh, might say any more, but I expect Aleph to do very well, to be honest. And, and I still have a large position in Aleph. Um, and yeah, I just, I'm, I'm trying to position across different sectors and different verticals in the industry. So, you know, with identity, I have checked. With uh, GameFi and gaming and Web3 gaming, I have Beam. Um, you know, obviously with AI, I have Potenza. With, um, you know, the layer ones, I have Casper and I have Aleph. And I, I can look at a bunch of these projects, you know, with the Neo banking and the, and the crypto bank inside of things, I have Fidium, which was Blockbank. So I'm trying to position a lot, a bunch of different verticals and sectors. So if we ever get those narratives, then I'm positioned accordingly. Um, but yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to jump off in a second. Oh, red light. So I'm gonna have to jump off in a second because uh, I'm gonna be arriving at my destination. But I'm hoping everyone has a good 2024, uh, and I hope everyone is gonna be smart and sensible um, about how they navigate it because you can easily get carried away with things. You can easily make the wrong decision, act on emotions. Uh, the most, the, the, the thing that I think everyone needs to make sure they do is approach everything with a level head and um, remember where you started and not, not, not necessarily what you have now. So what I mean by that is, you know, if you had a thousand dollars to start with and all of a sudden your portfolio goes up to fucking two million, let's just say, like, because you have a crazy or let, let's just say 500 grand, your portfolio goes up to 500 grand from $1,000. You don't quite reach the top uh, to, to take profits. It comes back down to 350 grand. Um, don't be looking at that peak as, you know, ah, oh, I did have 500 grand, now I've only got 350 grand. You need to be looking at it as, I started with 1,000, now I have 350 grand. And that is an incredible return. Uh, and it's a mental thing. But I, I do think that that's something that people, if we get this ball run, that's something you need to remember. Um, you're here to change your circumstances and would that change your circumstances? abso fucking -lutely. So approach it with a sensible mind. Um, things are gonna get fucking crazy if we get that ball run, but try and stay rational uh, and, and identify when we're getting that crazy mania phase because that's the phase when you need to start looking around and going, Okay, maybe I need to leave the party. So be sensible. I hope you all have a good 2024. I hope you had a good 2023. Um, let's have one last go, one last dance, and uh, 